the first time I saw him play with the E Street Band. He came up on stage uh, in 2008. We were playing at uh, the former Giants Stadium. It was the last string of shows before they tore it down. There's video of this where I'm out. I go to the front of the stage and we have these big video screens. And there's Jay playing with Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band in front of 80,000 people. And you can see me watching him on the big screen. So it's fantastic. And that brought tears to my eyes to see that. I had been playing for three years at that point. Like seriously, like studying drums for maybe like three years or whatever. And to me, I was like, if I'm messing up at Giant Stadium on the drums, like you can't just like pull me down in the mix, you know, to hide it. Like it was that was a lot of pressure. But you, you know, I think you were just like, do it. Like see what it, you know, could be fun. And I and it was I kind of went into that with like the intent of like, well, I never have to do it again. I'll just do it this one time and <laughs> never have to do it again. And then well, I knew Jay could do it, and so did Bruce. Actually, Bruce had seen him play in a club, sitting in with. Uh, a band he later joined against me, and he had the beard, so he, he said, Jay, is that you afterwards? And, you know, he, he said, he played the hell out of the drums. And so Bruce had seen him play a year or two before that, and like I said, he got really good really fast. It turned into more than that, and it turned into a career. What was really funny at the beginning of the process of, you know, kind of just even discussing that I would fill in for him on tour, Bruce gave me a list of like a couple hundred songs to, uh, to start learning and, and dive into, because we're definitely going to play these and then we'll add more as we go, but start with these. And so you and I took that, that list. It was so funny because, you know, we're, we're going through, it's like, all right, we're going to start with this song and you were going to show me like note for note how you, you know, laid it down, how you play it. It was just so hilarious because that just is not, we're so different drummers that it's just like, I'm, I had such a huge task ahead of me of learning all these songs that to learn the nitty gritty of each like kick drum hit and, you know, all this little stuff and to learn it the way he plays it, it's like, if I try to do it the way he does it, it's just it's it's not him, you know. It's not. I don't want to be that second rate, you know, the guy that's just trying to be him because he's, you know, he's carved out his own thing for years. So it's kind of like it's like a dad trying to teach your son how to like drive a car. It was it's like, exactly Dad, I'm that. not screw you, Dad. I'm, you know, like <laughs> it wasn't working. It, it, like within five minutes, it was <laughs> obvious that it was like teaching your teenager to drive. And you just have, you know, I had a back off. When he was uh, about 14, he decided he wanted to play the drums. He took one of my old drum sets and taught himself how to play the drums. I was working in New York every day, right? And I really had nothing to do with him wanting to play the drums you know, and actually going up and setting up one of my old drum sets to play the drums. And when he finally sort of became a drummer, maybe a year later, the only thing I said was, you know, don't hold the sticks tightly, don't grip them tightly, and keep very strict time. Both of those things he embraced. And I never thought, A, that that would happen, and I never really thought that was in the cards at all, that, you know, that this would suddenly become a bonding thing between us. How do you exist in the world today as a musician? Which is difficult. It's much more difficult now than it was when I was a kid. And he's figured it out for himself. And it's been another thing where we've been able to bond because we have faced a lot of the same situations that are specific to being an aspiring musician. And no matter your degree of success, you're always aspiring. You're aspiring to play better. You're aspiring to do your own thing. I think being a musician, you always have to be in the mood to learn. You always have to be in the, you know, uh, absorbing information and just like different styles. Because I, I mean, you couldn't get like two more different styles of drummers than than my dad and me, which is an amazing thing. 
you know, because we grow up in two different generations, and I'm so thankful for the music that he turned me on to and my mom turned me on to at, you know, an early age. It was great fun for me as a father to be loading up, you know, a van or a car and take him to his own recording session or to take him to various clubs in Asbury Park and help unload the equipment because it's something my father did. People have asked me, you know, are you competitive with your son? I said, absolutely not. First of all, he's much better than I am. He's taken my drumming, you know, whatever beats I play and just gone so far beyond me. It's ridiculous. He got a full page story on him in Rolling Stone magazine. I never did. You know, I never won a modern drummer poll for best drummer in a genre. So these things are uh, fantastic for me to experience. And it was something that brought us even closer together and has continued to this day. I mean, they're, they're my favorite band. To watch them do their thing, I take any opportunity I get to see them play and to see him drum. Um, because I always learn something, and it's always just so incredible to uh, to watch. It's hard to put into words, but I think when you when you look at the what he's been able to accomplish and is still accomplishing, that's a major source of inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. 